This is my TIG welder, it's a TechArc 166i ACDC, 160 amp output. I've had it a little over a year and I just had the urge to take the cover off and just check on the build quality and to see everything works. All ten screws are out. And straight away we can see it's quite modular. The mains cable's coming in and it goes through a common mode suppression. This has been switched off for quite some time so the capacitor should be discharged but you've still got to be careful here. Through the main switch, power coming over, it goes down there to the uh, power board. On there we have an inrush current relay, I think that's the relay. Yeah, and that obviously shorts out a capacitor when uh, after a few seconds. Straight away, the interesting thing is they've used two what looks like 35 amp bridge rectifiers and they've put them in parallel and they've also doubled up on the wire gauge. You know, one of these is more than adequate to handle the uh, normal working current, but they've doubled them up to take the inrush current. There's a small line frequency transformer there, which I'm not quite sure what that's for yet. I'm guessing it's got, there's the outputs there. It's got uh, four 20 volt outputs. They're isolated from each other by the looks. Right, and the DC passes through the rectifiers. These four smoothing capacitors, they are an NEG brand. 400 volt, 170 microfarads. And that small switching transformer there, that looks to me to be drive the electronics on the board. So why they've got that, I don't know. Up here, we've got the, uh, it looks like they're using a, a H-bridge MOSFETs to drive the, uh, the main switching transformer, which you can see just there, and there's two Two output filter chokes to filter the high frequency, and then it passes into a, another H bridge made of uh, IRFP 260s, I think. Yeah, and that converts the uh, the AC into DC. Sorry, the DC back into AC for the uh, for the uh, function for welding aluminium. And that small control board down there, looking at it, it takes all four takes all four circuits from the transformer. And then ah, I've got an idea what that is. Did you buy that for you? It goes in and it feeds. Ah, it's a gate. It's, just, it's to drive the MOSFETs. Why they use the line for even to transform, I don't know. So the output AC welding frequency is going to be set to the mains frequency, 50 hertz for us, 60 North America. Obviously you wouldn't want to take this thing abroad, it weighs a bloody ton. Right. Look down to the other side. That there is what couples the uh, high frequency into the, uh, the welding leads for the HF start. Great power resistor there, I've got a clue what that's for. This unit is a fan on demand, so it only uh, kicks in when it gets to a certain temperature. So I'm guessing that's what that thermostat's for. God knows what that power resistor is. The uh, machine is actually assembled in the UK by Technical Art Limited. And there's the uh, third, of, third of the ninth, 2014. See, uh, inspected so I claimed it was made in the UK but I'm guessing all parts and circuit boards they're uh, probably imported from China and just assembled together. Some real great thick copper tracks there for the inputs. Yeah. It's 
rated at 160 amps at 60% duty cycle, which is quite good. Yeah. Oh yeah, this machine shouldn't be plugged in on a 13 amp fuse. It needs to a 13 amp plug rather. It needs to idea to be on a 16 amp. Pulls about, pulls about 15, 16 amps off the load, this machine does, so you shouldn't be pulling that for a 13 amp plug. Although it does say in the instructions it can work on a 13 amp plug, but it's not something I would recommend. It's, uh, it's a little bit uh, too much to pull through. The, uh, it's got dual fans. The top fan is for the, uh, the inverter part, and then the bottom fan is for the H bridge from the DC to AC. This company manufactures a range of different TIG welders and uh, the 160 amp model that's just straight DC output it would probably be just this part, this this part and this part and obviously it's just double stacked for the uh, AC. Yes, it's, uh, it's a bit dusty because I've been using it for a while but a whopping great uh, Metal oxide varista, I think. So it's pretty well made, and I think it should last me a fair few years. Yeah, the uh, proper proper grounding lug for the earth. Back to these two bridge rectifiers. It's quite strange that they've used heat sink compound, and they've screwed into steel, they're not going to get that hot because they're 235 amp, I believe the 35 amp bridge rectifiers connected in parallel so that's like uh, 70 amps and the machine only pulls 16 so and even if they were to get hot this metal sheet isn't going to conduct the heat away it's, it needs to be something like that I'm guessing that's where they've doubled up that board seems a bit flimsy but I mean it's not too bad. It's, you know, they could have could have attacked, put something across there. To, you know, there isn't much room. This must be all the control electronics. I mean, I'm not an expert in electronics, but uh, right. Then, uh, see the. Uh, I'm not sure what they are. Right. See so, yeah, put current display. There must be some some current shunt somewhere on the uh, output. Not sure where they've done that. The uh, <coughs> the output the output on the AC you can vary the uh, percentage of basically whether it's more positive or more negative it's the uh, you know, it's, it's the AC balance that's like 50-50 so that small board there will shift the phases coming out of the line frequency transformer so it operates the gates of the MOSFETs either, either one side more positive and the other side more negative depending on which way you uh, Cleaning, I use about 60% uh, penetration, 40% cleaning. Right, I think that might do it. I'll put the cover back on and uh, that'll do, I think.